my question to Ricardo will be, how will uh, the European Investment Bank play a role in the increase in EU connectivity with the rest of the world and therefore also increase in Europe digital sovereignty and strengthening the EU global influence in the world's digital economy? Ricardo, please. Well, uh, thank you very much for the question. Thank you very much for uh, the invitation uh, to be here. I'd like to thank uh, Anna Com and the person of his president and the members of the board and the Portuguese presidency for the invitation for this conference. And the topics we are going to address here today uh, are key for a common future. Uh, the role of communication digital technologies is today more prominent uh, than ever. And the pandemic showed us very clearly how much the new technologies are key for uh, a resilient uh, society. Uh, teleworking, homeschooling, digital health services, and uh, many more. Uh, can you even imagine what would have been our life over the last uh, year and something <clears throat> if uh, uh, our technological and digital infrastructures have not resisted to the sudden uh, jump and the demand for uh, digital services and digital platforms? Uh, I would say that our life would have been even more miserable uh, than uh, uh, what in fact was over the last year. And digital technologies made our life uh, a bit more uh, uh, happier than it would have been otherwise. So it's an honor to be here and it was just great to participate in the digital day organized by the Portuguese presidency back in March. In March I had the opportunity to congratulate uh, uh, the presidency on the historical achievements on the European Data Gateways Declaration, EU Startup Nation Standard Declaration, uh, the Declaration on Green and Digital Transformation of the EU. These were great achievements uh, during this Portuguese presidency. And the future competitiveness and prosperity of Europe hinges on leading the next way of industrial transformation. And green and digital transitions are the twin engines of uh, this transformation. Europe is currently a world leader in climate innovation. But uh, in what concerns digital technologies, there is still uh, a way to walk. And better we start walking this way now. Uh, I would say even better, better to start running this way now, uh, supporting new uh, digital technologies uh, as a key strategic challenge uh, that Europe is facing over the next not that many years. You have a, a very short time to rise to this uh, challenge. And connectivity is a key element of Europe's digital transformation. I would have to say that Europe's uh, digital sovereignty and global competitiveness depends critically on strong, strong and secure connectivity. The EU has an enormous potential to become a world-class data hub. Where data is stored, where data is shared, where data is processed in a secure way. Respecting data integrity Respecting data confidentiality, respecting data privacy and data ownership is just key. And this will bring enormous benefits to uh, the European economy, to the European businesses, to the European citizens, citizens and definitely uh, to, uh, de to the European environment and contribution to reach the Paris uh, Agreement targets. Besides the robust legal framework and high-quality infrastructures, the, EU, the European Union needs future-proof high-quality connections. Connections to the rest of the world. High-quality connections are just imperative to become such a hub to ensure that Europe provides services on a worldwide basis. And the IB as the EU Bank is committed to face this digital challenge. We are committed to combine our technical and financial resources to support EU policy priorities, being it inside the EU or outside the EU, to achieve these objectives and move to a worldwide digital leadership. That's the challenge that Europe faces. The IB aims to make a major contribution to, the European, to Europe's leading role, a leading role in the promotion of the decarbonization and the green, resilient and socially inclusive economy. And digital solutions have a profound impact on most parts of the future economy. Digital solutions facilitate climate mitigation in many sectors, such as energy, transport, buildings, and agriculture. Digital solutions allow to, for smart and efficient technologies and for ICT enabling services. Many industries, voices, 
consider ICT, an enabling technology for services that could lead to increased energy efficiency. To substitute physical and virtual by virtual products and services that can replace travel and face-to-face -face communications with online communication tools. All these services could reduce emissions in many sectors of our life, in many areas uh, of our economic activity. And the transition was deeply accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic. We are one of the financial institutions with the largest capacity of intervening in financing digital projects. Over the last five years, we have financed approximately 12.5 billion euros for digital connectivity projects only. We have participated on the financing of the Elalink submarine cable. We are the financial institution with more exposure to digital economy sector. And collaboration between all parties is particularly relevant in the digital field. Digital world is inherently cross-cutting and fits into a broader framework of transformation. And this requires inputs from a variety of sources uh, of expertise, of fields of knowledge. Whatever the nature, nature of the project to be financed, being it an infrastructure or a service, being it public, being it private, being it a disruptive innovation or a, a transformational innovation, collaboration is just essential. And the IBE is the institution that has the capacity, the financial capacity, uh, to bring all this together, to intervene in this space and foster and leverage the European Union policy objectives and the uh, EU budget resources. On financial and engineering capabilities and proven knowledge, the digital sector could be extremely amplified in full alignment with the European Union geostrategic options, and these are critical these days, in line with European Union policies and with sustainable economic development priorities. As part of our portfolio of products and services, we can provide direct lending. That's the traditional, the most common product we supply. But we can also bring equity and quasi-equity solutions, because we are an extremely patient lender, an extremely patient financier, that's a distinguishing feature of the EIB. We have uh, very patient uh, shareholders and we can take projects that for which the cash flows come well far in the future. And we are able to wait without having the pressure, the pressure to deliver to our shareholders in the short term. But we also have a risk bearing capacity, meaning that we can share risk with the private sector such that projects that have very high risks can, be, be, can become affordable in, ter in risk terms for the private sector because we can take part of this risk. And uh, that's in our DNA, that's in our genetics. That's what we meet for, to share the risks of high risk technological proje projects, reduce as much as possible by due diligence and being able to risk and sometimes lose money, sometimes win money, but in the end of the day, moving forward, financing technological progress and take these risks. And we work with clients of all sizes, from large corporates to small startups with different types of products. And this can help to leverage investment attractiveness to private investors, as shown in the past and in the current projects that we are funding. This is especially true for infrastructure projects and businesses in the private sector, thus increasing the global size and the impact of investments. So EIB is focused in providing funding where it is particularly needed to induce higher investment levels when the market is delivering suboptimal investment levels given the features, the risk features of these investments. And given the large gap between the EU policy targets for high performance infrastructures and their implementation, I would say that in this area, there is plenty of room for this. There is a market failure, as we used to name it in economics. I would say that uh, in the modern way of looking at it, there's a market gap. There's a market that needs to be created. Private investors perceive EIB lending to a project as a quality endorsement. Our participation is usually seen as a quality stamp that crowds in private investors and that leverages the deployment of EU programs, making them more impactful. 
EIB is the EU bank, thus we are very rigorous in safeguarding European values, principles and standards. And in the digital uh, area and in connectivity area, this is even more important than in other areas. In the digital sector, this translates, for example, into special at attention to the strict respect for the national sovereignty into high privacy compliance standards for protecting users' data, into high levels of IT integrity and security. We are a key player when it comes to supporting the emergence and building capacity of these new technologies. Given the risks in the emergence of new threats across all areas of the economy, EIB provides financing to innovative solutions, also to tackle cybersecurity challenges and hybrid threats. We ensure that our promoters apply the best practices to ensure the security of digital infrastructure and of the supply chains. Just to give you an example, we are fully in line with the 5G toolbox recommendations across infrastructures that were endorsed by the Commission back in January 2020. And this applies also to sub submarine cables to address security risks related to development of the five generation mobile networks. So we support shaping Europe's digital future and we stand ready to do more and to do better for the future of Europe, for the future of our citizens and for the next generations. So thank you very much. And that's uh, the way I would address the question you raised. Uh, thank you.